hey welcome back guys to this endless runner tutorial so in this one we actually restrict our camera from following our player left and right we also restrict it on a um, vertical axis as well so as you can tell right now it's going to follow you up to a certain point and then we also do something else we also create some kind of nice animation at the beginning I don't know if you saw it I'll just play it once more it starts from up there and then it slowly gradually moves towards our player so that's what we're gonna do today guys without further ado let's get started okay so well last episode we actually created a camera that would follow our player around but that's not actually the, the behavior we want um as you could tell when i was going left and right the camera would actually follow at the same time now for an endless runner I believe that the camera should always be in the center of the uh, of the track basically so imagine that our track is going to be something like this then I don't want my camera to be following me around I'd like my camera to actually stay in the middle of that track and today we are actually going to restrict the camera movement a little bit so we're going to go back inside the camera motor script and in here we will go ahead and just start coding a little bit more so just like we did for the player, we are going to declare a private vector3 move vector. And now this move vector is actually going to equal look at the position plus start offset. Oops. Start offset like this. So pretty much what we had here, we are going to put inside of move vector and then we're going to say transform the position is equal to move vector. Now what we've did is actually nothing in terms of um, the way this is going to work. These are the same values, but we've actually created a layer in between this and this so we can now modify the move vector. So like we've did for the player, we're going to say this is the X, this is the Y, and this is the Z. Now the Z I don't think is going to take any modification, so that's fine. We can leave it like this. We can actually remove it completely. Now as for the X, I want to make sure that move vector that x is always zero, which is the center of my um, of my track basically. Now, as for the y, um, we don't have a jump in the game. Uh, at least I don't plan on having any, but we might have some kind of um, track that goes a little bit up. So maybe some stairs, some really small stairs. So for the y, I like to also restrict the y axis because our player is going to be uh, going up the stairs and then our camera will follow him as well but I don't necessarily want him to follow him all the way so I'll just say move vector dot y is equal to mat f dot clamp and we're gonna clamp the move vector dot y and say we're gonna leave that value in between 3 and 5 so our camera is going only going to be able to move um, in that 2 meter range, so in between 3 and Y, so that's about here, 3 and Y, 2, 5 and Y, which is about there, but when it's at that point, that also means the player will be up by 2, so the player will be about here. Okay, I'm going to hit Control Z on this to restore what I had before, and that's pretty much what I'll be leaving it on, so I'm going to hit play now. And as you can tell, it actually stays there. And now eventually, if we have some kind of little stairs, I'm just going to duplicate this really quickly to show you. Like so. Then our player is going to go up that ramp, but eventually the camera is going to stop right there. And same thing, it, uh, same thing works for when he's going in the other direction, so when he's going down. Okay, so we've just restricted our camera from left and right and up and down, but we keep going with the z-axis and that's just fine, but I'd like to create something more, something more visible, something more um, stylish whenever we press start, whenever we start a game, we go straight in the game and I don't really like that. What I'd like to do is actually give our player some time to actually look at the scene and what's going on, so imagine you're actually playing the game, you're pressing on start in the menu we're going to have later on, and then you get a good second to just understand what's going on, not, not simply just press play and that's black screen and then boom one shot like this you can actually move, you can actually um, do all that kind of stuff. So I'd like to actually restrict 
the movement of our player for a second and also um, create some kind of camera animation for a second as well. So for this we'll be going back inside of the camera motor first and then we'll go back inside of the player motor. So on top of my script over here I will do I will create a private float that I call transition that I'll be putting on zero for now and you'll see what this is used for a little bit later on and also create another float that I'll call animation duration that uh, we could be putting it on two seconds so we've got a good two seconds to actually um, grasp what's going on and finally I'll declare a private vector 3 that I call animation uh, camera offset but in this case I'll just say animation offset is equal to say new vector 3 and maybe give it 0, 5, 5 okay so if we go back to our update this is what you usually happens on a normal frame so that's the normal movement of the camera and that's all good but right there in between the um, all these call and the last one I'll just stick them together um, in between all of these what I'll do is I'll create a condition right there I'll say if transition is bigger than 1 then if that's the case that means okay we can just do this do transform the position is equal to move vector do the normal um, movement but else if transition is not bigger than one that means we're still in the animation the early animation the start animation because if you remember over here private float transition is equal to zero and that's when the game starts so when the game starts transition is on zero so we run this, we run this, but we are going to enter the else statement. We're not going to run this because in order to enter this, then transition has to be bigger than one. And right now it's on zero. So we enter the else statement. So that's the animation at the start of the game. Now, what exactly we'll be doing for this animation? What we'll do is an actual loop. So we'll say transform that position just like there so the position of the camera is going to equal vector3.lup and we'll say camera position oh never mind we're, we're gonna say move vector so that's where we should be plus the animation offset that we set right here and we're gonna lerp in between this and the move vector the, the correct position we're going to learn by transition, which is our float that should be in zero and one, in between zero and one, and that's going to actually work. Okay, now all we need to do is increment that transition value so we can actually, um, well, have a different lerp every frame, and also end up finishing this this animation so we can enter this if statement at one point. So what we're going to say is transition is plus equal to time dot delta time times one divided by animation duration okay so you just gotta tell yourself that after one second time dot delta time is equal to one so just say one seconds times one divided by say in this case that's two so one divided by two zero point five it is going to take two seconds in order for this to be equal to one let's actually just have a look so you guys might understand a little bit more what I'm talking about and this is what happens when I press on play so the camera is up here I don't know if you can tell it's actually closer to the player it starts here so it's five meter closer then its original value as you can tell it's like over here and then as the animation progress it's going to go in the back like this and also go down like this always compared to the player now since I'm there I might as well look at the player so I'll just say transform dot look at and I'm going to say look at the position and maybe add a dot vector up so vector 3 dot up 
Now what this does, it is going to take the camera rotation, the orientation it currently has, so this thing is going to rotate it to actually look towards the point I gave him. In this case, I gave him the position of the player, so right there, plus one and up. So if we press play now, so we get an animation that goes from up there and that looks at the player. So we get this kind of shot and then it progressively moves like this. And that's our start animation. Now, if you want to see it more in detail, you can always increment the animation duration by say four, like so. Then it's going to take four seconds for the animation to complete. Now, it really depends on your liking. And um, I'm actually going to put it on three seconds. But just make sure you remember that value because we're also going to be restricting the player from moving during that duration. So in this case, three seconds. Let me just play it once more. And here we go. So as you could tell, I also um, broke my camera because on the last frame, it's still looking at my player and I don't want this to happen. So what we're going to do now is actually restrict the player as well. Now take your animation duration like this. We're going to copy it and add over to the player motor script. In there, I will also put a animation duration. Now in order to stop our player from moving for three seconds, all we have to do is, since we know that everything happens in the update, all we really have to do is go up here, first line of update and say, if time dot time, and that is pretty much just gonna return um, the amount of time in seconds that uh, this scene has been running. So in this case, it's at the moment we press start, it's going to be on zero, and after three seconds, it is going to be on three. So if time dot time is smaller than animation, oops, animation duration, then if that's the case, let's make sure we actually move, do all our movement right here. So all we gotta say is controller dot move. And when our player has no input, he's still going forward. So we gotta say vector three dot forward times speed times time dot delta time. So that's what you used to do before that. So that's what we did on the first video. Don't forget your semicolon. And then after that, since we don't want the rest of this to be ran, all we gotta say is return. Now, if we put a return in the middle of uh, this if statement, then we're only going to run this. And then when it hits the return block, it's actually going to exit the update function. So this is not going to be run. If we read this real quick, it pretty much says, if the time right now is below three seconds, then we only do this. And if it's past three seconds, then we don't even run any of this and we just do our usual movement. Let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to hit play. Then left, right, left, right, nothing happens until the three second finishes. And that's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. If you learned something or if you like this, please give me a like, really appreciate it. And also if you have any comment or question, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. So guys, again, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.